we have billions of bacteria, fungi, or viruses in our gut, and they contribute a lot to our health. Today, I will explain you what they do in relation to fasting, because we have made a new study revealing the importance of the gut and the bacteria in the effect of fasting. I am Robin Ménage, scientist at uh, the Boehringer Wilhelmi Clinics and also at King's College London. And today I will explain you everything you should know about the gut microbiome and fasting. These bacteria which we have in our gut, they can have large effects locally in the intestine. This is not very surprising, but sometimes they can also produce molecules like hormones. And when these molecules enter our bloodstream, they can have effects on organs like the brain. And so that the microbiome we have in our gut can influence organs like the brain and also influence our behavior. At the Boehringer Wilhelmi Clinics, we have experience on intestinal disease since 70 years, and we have been seeing the benefits of long-term fasting on the gut from clinical experience. However, we don't really know well what happens at the scientific level. To understand more, because this is very controversial, these bacteria in our gut, if you stop eating, some of them will die because they highly depend on our food. And this is why also we call them commensals. This is meaning uh, that we eat at the same table in Latin. So if they die, maybe this will have effects on our health. And so fasting has been really debated for this topic in the last decade. To understand what they do, we have been doing a scientific review with a group of experts. A scientific review, this is a type of scientific article where we collect all the data which is available on fasting and gut microbiome. We analyze all the results and we group everything to squeeze it and extract what we call the state of the art. This was published recently in the journal Trends in Microbiology. For the group of experts, we have been working with Quinten Ducarmont and uh, Jörg Zeller. They are working at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory and they are experts about how the gut microbiome can have a dialogue with the human body because there are many interactions which can ultimately influence the effect of fasting. We have been also working with uh, Carolina Bolt and Yvon Lemao. They are working at the CNRS in Strasbourg in France, and they are specialists in wild animals like penguins. We are working with them because we consider that uh, we need to understand what evolution has done to tolerate fasting and benefits from it so that we can understand what it does in humans. Because fasting can have many effects in wild animals. Did you know that, for instance, uh, emperor penguins, they can fast for 120 days in conditions which are very extreme in Antarctica, minus 50 degrees, 200 kilometers per hour of wind, Many animals are hibernating or migrating, and in this case, they can stay for months without food, like migrating birds, seals, squirrels, and these animals have deployed really amazing strategies to cope with that. Birds, they can migrate for 10,000 kilometers over the Pacific Ocean, mostly using their fat as a source of energy because they have mechanisms which protect their muscle. And some animals are even using their gut microbiome to protect their muscles. There was a study published last year showing that uh, ground squirrels, they can use their gut microbiome to recycle waste from their metabolism, in the ca this case urea, and urea is transformed back into these bricks which can be used to make proteins. So in this case, the squirrel can use its microbiome to maintain its muscle mass during hibernation. And there's some important data on the gut too. Some animals are very notorious because they don't eat often, like snakes. They can eat sometimes just once a year. 
And in the case of the Burmese python, this is quite impressive because the intestine can be atrophied by 70% when it doesn't eat. But when it eats, it has to regenerate very quickly to deal with the digestion. And this is something which happens also in humans fasting. The intestine is regenerating very quickly after the food reintroduction to deal with the food intake. And this is something we don't understand fully well. That's partly why we did this review. The bacteria in our gut, they are modified a lot by fasting. Some bacteria will die because they only use our food as a source of nutriment, but some others will survive and they will, for instance, feed on our intestinal mucosa, which is recycled during fasting and also on this mucus. So they persist and you have this switch when you start fasting, your gut microbiome is completely switching composition. This has effects on the immune system. This is stimulating the immune system and probably responsible for a reinforcement of the immune system after fasting. But what was the most interesting for us is what happens in the intestine itself because the bacteria they have been studying for the, a while and we know more or less what happens to them. But what happened in the gut itself is still a mystery. But in our review, we have characterized some mechanisms by which fasting can regenerate the intestine and rejuvenate the intestine. This is, for instance, autophagy. Autophagy, this is this recycling process in the body, which can be triggered by fasting. This is basically circular economy for your body. You recycled old damaged compounds to make new ones. And there was a study just published actually showing that uh, autophagy is the main mechanisms by which fasting can regenerate the gut. There are other mechanisms by which fasting can regenerate the body. Our intestine is renewed every couple of days, and there are some studies sh showing that uh, intestine can regenerate even more during fasting. These studies by Walter Longo, they showed that when mice were fasting, their stem cells were activated to renew and rejuvenate the intestine. There is another concept which is quite important, and I will go into uh, a bit deep into the science. This is the concept of dysbiosis. Dysbiosis, this is what we say when we talk about this imbalance in the intestinal ecosystem. Dysbiosis, scientists have been trying to understand this concept and what it does for many years and trying also to point which bacteria is responsible for dysbiosis. But they failed because there is no good or bad bacteria and it all depends on the conditions inside your gut. If your gut is inflamed or full of oxidative stress, the, a good bacteria can become a bad bacteria. And so we showed that this is in this case that fasting can have very powerful effect to regenerate and re rejuvenate the gut because fasting is really addressing these points about inflammation and reducing the oxidative stress. You can imagine your body and your gut like if it was a garden. If you want to plant beautiful flowers in your garden and the soil is damaged and not fertile, it's not sufficient to just throw a few seeds and wait and nature will not do its job in this case. You have to work on the soil, and regenerate it. And this is like intest the intestine. And this is what fasting does to your intestine by reducing inflammation, reducing oxidative stress, so that it regenerates your gut. And then your gut will be able to welcome new bacteria during the food reintroduction, and you will rejuvenate also the gut ecosystem. In this review, we also wanted to point out what are the gaps so that we can make new studies which will be helpful to understand what are the effects of fasting on the gut. One of the main points, this is the food reintroduction. We don't really understand how we should reintroduce the food. We know at the Boringer Wilhelmi Clinic that it is very slow 
only vegetarian and this is the best way to get the most benefits of the fast. But there is also sometimes an inflammation and we need to have more studies to understand this. In our gut, there's also bacteria, viruses and fungi. And we don't really understand what happens to the fungi and the viruses. We know that they are important for many diseases because they can also have a dialogue with other organs like the brain, but there have been no research showing what are the effects of fasting on viruses and fungi. And this is something we are exploring right now in our studies. Another important question, this is, should I take prebiotics or probiotics and will they be effective? This is a question that patients are asking all the time and we don't have a clear answer to that. There is no consensus in the scientific community as to whether probiotics and prebiotics are working well. Because it depends on your ecosystem. We have all a personal microbiome and for some persons, a probiotic will work because this is the right ecosystem and these bacteria will have beneficial actions. But for some other persons, the bacteria will not fit into the gut ecosystem. And in this case, this can be even damaging because this will delay the restoration of the microbiome after fasting. So there is a lot of research to be done still on the topic. And this is what we are doing now at the Boinger Villelmi Clinic. So we only scratch the surface of this topic and there's more research to be done. But one thing is sure is that in our world, we are in a situation of chronic fasting deprivation, like sleep. We say that we are in a situation of chronic sleep deprivation because we need more sleeps and this has effect on our health. But we can say the same for fasting and having more regular periods of fasting, intermittent fasting or long term fasting. This will have for sure beneficial effects for our intestine and will allow us to have a better digestion for our life. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to know more about fasting and the gut, we have been making other videos on the topic. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and enjoy this video.